Hi everyone, this is Margaret Martinosi speaking on behalf of the authors of this paper. Thanks so much for this honor. It really means a lot to us and we regret that we can't be there in person to celebrate. This Cbernet paper at ASPLOS 02 was the first paper in a project that lasted five years and brought three generations of our designs to Africa for deployment. By the end of our project, we demonstrated a real working system with hardware and protocols and colors that we designed and built and it pioneered the notion of mobile opportunistic sensor networks. This offered huge energy savings and huge improvements in wildlife data collection over hundreds of square miles in Africa. But this paper was before we got to all of that, before we got to Kenya, and before there were zebras wearing our collars. I was a recently tenured associate professor. I'd been doing work on power efficient architectures and now I wanted to build something real. And getting tenure made me want to do something really different. One day I got an email from a colleague. Remind me to tell you about zebras is all it said. Turns out biology professor and zebra expert Dan Rubenstein had heard about some other mobile computing work I'd been doing on campus and he wanted to talk about zebra tracking. Today you could use a ruggedized cell phone with solar recharge for much of this, but back then smartphones didn't exist yet, GPS barely existed, and rural Kenya had no cell service. There were also serious energy constraints and system reliability challenges. So the project was born. We'd build better zebra trackers to gather detailed location data. The data would help biologists understand why certain zebra subspecies were endangered in Kenya while others were not. This vintage figure shows how ZebraNet's protocol had nearby nodes swap data peer-to-peer -peer rather than sending it directly to a distant base station. These short-range swaps were very energy efficient compared to longer transmissions, and over time the data would percolate to the base using epidemic propagation. The paper used a Markov model of how zebras might move to predict how the protocol would work. From the little observation data we had, the model helped us estimate how much data would eventually get back to the base station using these energy efficient peer-to-peer -peer epidemic protocol. At the time of the paper, we also had a breadboarded prototype. Everything was huge and not ready to be attached to a zebra in any way. The later boards we designed were about the size of a credit card. There were also several evolutions over time in the processor and the programming model. At the time, people either thought ZebraNet was really cool or really crazy or both. But compared to the DARPA smart dust sensor networks back then, our work showed that in some cases, mobile sensor nodes had much better data forwarding capacity and energy efficiency. Because it seemed so crazy, I gave myself one year to get a paper published and to get some research funding. If it didn't happen in a year, I was going to move on to something else. So this was the paper. The funding came from a U.S. National Science Foundation grant. The person who funded ZebraNet nearly 20 years ago is still at NSF, and I was thrilled to get to tell her about this in person last week. Thanks also to that year's ASPLOS 10 program committee who saw the promise in this work despite the humble simulation results at the time. Their vision and positivity helped this work gain traction. In turn, this project helped advance issues in mobile sensor networks, delay tolerant networks, and full stack energy efficiency strategies. In addition to the authors on this paper, new students and professors joined the effort. In addition to groundbreaking research, there was arduous work on building and waterproofing collars and making them last. For all of us, the chance to deploy our work in the gorgeous grasslands of central Kenya was a research thrill that is hard to surpass. Thanks very much.